lovelies and welcome to crystals and coffee thank you for joining me this is part two of um my moving journey so if you're not already listened to part one it probably be a good idea to listen to that first um so it all makes a bit so it will make sense um so yeah thanks for joining me um i hope you ho- hope you're well um i'm just going to pick up where i left off really and just kind of keep going with um with the journey and I said like at the end of the last episode that I was going to talk more about like kind of the emotional side of the journey rather than what we actually did which is what what part one is a lot more about um so life here um, at the other end of the country is so so different now compared to how it was when we lived down south now it wasn't all that long ago we've only lived here since February but it feels like a complete lifetime ago. I mean, if I think back to this time last year when we were still there and we'd only just sold our house, um, it does. It just feels like a million years ago. It doesn't feel like it was, a, like it was less than a year ago we moved here because so much has changed and we're so settled here now that um, it just feels like it shouldn't be any other way, which is great because that shows that, you know, it really was meant to be and it was meant to, um, was meant to happen. Um, Our quality of life is really, really different here. Um, We don't feel so stuck. And I think the reason we felt so stuck down south was because it wasn't, I mean, in hindsight, obviously it's a wonderful thing looking back now, but um, looking back at it now, it kind of feels like that wasn't, we might have felt really stuck because it wasn't where we were supposed to be. Like we couldn't, um, grow and do what we wanted to do where we were because it wasn't supposed to be where we were supposed to settle basically. So we had this kind of, it always felt like the move up here always felt more like a calling. It wasn't a whim. It wasn't a, oh, let's just, let's just try it, try it out, see what happens. Um, which of course there was an element of that we had to try it and see but it wasn't that wasn't all it was it felt like it was it was a calling like we were meant to be here it was going to be the start of something huge and that is what it has become that's what it is um we have more um family time together we have different experiences here um the boys have been exposed to a lot of different things here they wouldn't necessarily have been exposed to had we stayed where we were so it all in all it's been a very enriching um experience but it took a massive leap of faith we moved away from everything and everyone we knew we moved away from all of our family uh, childhood friends in some instances we moved away from um, the completely changed uh, work. My husband completely left his career, completely different, retrained and doing something completely different now. Um, and it took two years from beginning to end. It took over just over two years um, from the point where we decided we wanted to move to getting the keys to the house we purchased, which is the house we're in now. I mean, I know we moved in February into a rented house, but the goal was to own a house here so it took just over two years from end to end um of that part of our journey um and not once did we doubt it we could always see the bigger picture um lots of things were thrown in our way but it never swayed us because we just knew what we had to get to no matter what basically we had this end goal in mind and um and we were going for it, basically. I mean, there are so many reasons not to do it. Um, like I said, we would have to have found new jobs. We moved up here both unemployed. Um, so that was a big leap of faith. Um, would the boys settle at a new school? Would they Would they like the move? Would they get used to everything? Would we even like it here? Um, would we find a house we wanted to buy? There were all these reasons um, to to not do it to think oh well you know we can just stay where we are but as nerve-wracking as it was we like I said we never doubted it it was a feeling of absolutely meant to be and at times it was really really hard like it was never going to happen um like for instance it took over a year for our house to sell and then it took another nearly six months for the house the sale to go through we had a lot of run-ins with our buyers um eventually it did go through obviously um and then like obviously the pandemic happened so you know what was it going to be with to do with work and things like that was one of the reasons why our first house we tried to buy here fell through 
Um, now looking back, that was meant to be so that we could find this one. Um, so yeah, it was really, really hard. Like it was never going to happen. Um, and it was a case of having to trust the process. Um, I was kept telling myself that all the time, trust the process, trust the process. Um, things are going to, are happening for a reason. I didn't understand it, but it was happening for a reason. Um, and if I hadn't trusted that process and if I hadn't had that unwavering, well, okay, I don't want to say unwavering because sometimes I really didn't feel like trusting the process because I'd had enough. But eventually getting through and trusting the process, um, I would have had far more breakdowns than I actually did. I mean, I had a number of breakdowns throughout this whole process. It was a really, really hard, um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, making this big of a life change is not easy. Um, and anyone who tells you it is, is lying. Um, but um, yeah, I had to trust the process basically. And that's a premise that can be applied to pretty much any situation, not something as huge as a cross-country move. Um, but there's always a million reasons not to do something. Um, anything. Uh, it can be as anything that you want to make a change. It, there's always a million reasons not to do it. Um, however, if it's something that you really, really, really want to do or it's something that you've been you feel it deep down that it's something that's really meant to be, then those reasons to do it are of a greater importance. Um, the re Often the reasons not to do something, it's our ego trying to convince us to stay where we are. Um, it's like an evolutionary response to stay where you are comfortable, where you know, where you are safe. Um, your rational brain is telling you why, 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 why do you want to mix it up? We're fine here. Look, we're fine. We've got this. We've got this. We've got this. Why would you? Why? Why would you need to do that? Um, and we have this inner inner argument, this inner turmoil with ourselves over saying yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. And your ego's like no, no, you're safe. You're fine where you are. Don't do it. And of course, this is there to keep us safe in a literal sense. Like you're not going to go you know, walk out into traffic or walk over a broken bridge. Um, you know, we you need these instincts to keep you safe. Absolutely. But sometimes when we listen to our inner voice and our gut feelings, um, our passions, our loves, we need to override that ego sometimes. We need to quieten that voice of saying that you know you don't do this because it could it could go wrong don't do it and we talk ourselves out of it um and sometimes that can mean that you never ever do it and you look back and you think oh what if what if i had just done it what if i had just gone on that and tried it out um and it's not I, I'm just going to... I am going to... It's a cliche, but life is too short. Um, and there will be people in your life telling you not to do it. Um, that you want to make changes, big or small. Um, and they will... They will either tell you it's not a great idea, or they think... Mm -hmm. Or they bring up those same reasons. They reiterate those reasons you've been trying... You've been telling yourself about why not to do it. Um, or, or to not even try because there's no point or you know think you know along those lines there are going to be naysayers and there are going to be people to not do it but these aren't always in your best interests these these people say these things saying that i'm just looking out for you it's just because i care about you i'm just being honest and but that's not where it's coming from it's not coming from they may think that they're saying it in your best interest but what it actually is is it's coming from that uh, that person's own fear of change they fear change so they're projecting that onto you and not only that they're starting to worry their ego is getting in the way saying well how is your change going to affect my life like oh my goodness you know you're going to change all these things that's going to have an effect on me i don't want i don't want to change so you can't change and that's where it's coming from consciously or not that is where it's coming from um and believe me I encountered that big time, big time. It took all my strength to rise above it. There was so much negativity. There was guilt. There were um, people crying at me for, for moving. Like, why do you want to do it? You're taking taking uh, the children away from us and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, no, I'm not. We're moving up the M6. It's a four-hour drive. You know, everyone will survive this. It's fine. 
Um, it's it, you know, and it's but but it's coming from it's coming from their fear of change, and that you know, and it's having to kind of keep telling yourself that um, to keep you strong, basically. And it, that's what and it took all my strength to rise above that sometimes because it wears you down, and it does make you feel guilty, it does make you upset, and it does make you think, oh, well, am I doing the right thing? And you think, no, hang on a second, I'm not doing this for them, I'm doing it for me and and for my family. So. Um, and thankfully, now that we have done it and we've come out the other side, um, those same people can see the change it has made for us and the life that me, my husband and my boys are living here. And thankfully, yeah, they, they can see that it has been a really, really good thing. And everyone has to adjust to that. Um, and if anything their doubts and their comments and things that they were saying pushed us harder pushed us pushed us up here even harder because it was like right now we know we're going to do this because we're going to prove you wrong um and it gives you even more determination and more grit to, to not cave in and to go ahead and do it so if there is something anything big or small that's been burning away at you maybe it's time to at very least allow yourself to explore it um even if it's just quote unquote on paper at first like unfold the possibilities explore how you might approach it put together a plan eat one small step at a time even if it's a teeny tiny step like my first teeny tiny step on the road to this back in september 2019 when we thought right we want to move up to by the lake district we're going to move to carlisle my first step was to go on right move which i think is the same as um I'm trying to think of the name of the American site now. I can't think of it. Zello? Yellow? Something like that. Zillow. Is it Zillow? Maybe it's Zillow. Um, it's a it's a house web, property website, basically, where you can pop in like where you want to move, your postcode or whatever, and it brings up all the houses that are on the market. And um, that was my first step. My first step was to go on right move and pop in Carlisle, UK, enter, put in our budget, three bedroom house and had the properties come up and find and looked at what was here and what was in our price range and that was my first step didn't involve me doing anything big or scary it was literally sat on my sofa with my laptop doing an internet search but that was my first step at allowing myself to explore doing it to actually move so it doesn't always, so you eat tiny little steps it always like helps and it was very exciting to do that because as I was like admitting to myself saying right, you're going to do this like, and allowing myself to explore the possibility so that's what I would say if there is anything that you are wanting to do allow yourself to explore the possibility one small step at a time and um, start your journey for you and yours not for anyone else not for anyone else who might have doubts or try and talk you out of it you have to stay focused on you and yours Um, and it will be tough you'll meet resistance absolutely 100% there will be people out there who either are like I said afraid of their own change or are desperately wanting to make that change for themselves but aren't brave enough to so they're jealous of you making that change and being brave enough because they know they're not brave enough to do it for themselves so that's where it comes from they're projecting onto you um so yeah it will be tough you do have to keep focused um but uh it it is uh, i can tell you from from personal experience it's absolutely worth it to stick with it um you have to as i keep saying trust the process um and it will unfold exactly as it needs to, even if you don't understand what's happening at the time. Like, I, like so many things happened with us, and I just thought, why? Why is this happening? But again, hindsight's a wonderful thing, and you can look back and see that it has all happened for a reason, and it's led us to exactly where we are now. Um, in my house, that I said in the first part, that is, it's it's not a mansion in any scheme of the things, but it's my mansion. And I love this house. It's my dream house. And over the next few years, I'm going to enjoy like renovating each and every room in turn to make it our house, put an hour mark on it. We're going to make it ours um, whilst keeping all the character and everything because it's it's like this house is like 130 years old. So it's just, it's stunning and I love it. Um, 
so yeah i hope that over these last two episodes you found well you found me waffling on interesting for a start um and most of all i'm really hoping that you found it helpful um to maybe take a change for yourself or at least give you a nudge to doing that those first steps to allowing yourself to explore the change um that's why i'm sharing my story because i feel so empowered by the pro the experience that i've had um and and what we've been through and the obstacles we had to face um that i want other people who want to make changes to be brave and to have the courage and to do it and um I just want to help people through that process because it's been so it's like it's been absolutely life-changing so um yeah it, it's I've loved telling the story and I've loved sharing it with you and I really hope you have found it interesting and helpful and I would love to hear of your experiences or what this might have inspired you to do I would love to hear your feedback so if you want to go ahead and send me a message, I'm on um, Instagram and Facebook at Crystals and Coffee KB. Um, I'll link it in the show notes and in the description so you can find it easily if that's easier for you. Um, but I would love to hear from you and I would love for you to follow me on there as well so that you can continue to follow my journey. I share um, not only things about um, the holistic side, the, the crystals and the coffee, um, set end of it being the coffee side of it being this, being like the, the chat as if I could chat with friends over coffee. So there's like the personal side to it, and the crystal side of it is the holistic spiritual side of things that I share as well. Um, just in case you didn't really understand what crystals and coffee was, that's what it is. Um, so yeah, it would be great to uh, to have you um, have you over there um, and to hear from you as well and um, if you're listening to this on the YouTube version then you can go ahead and comment um, um, I do have a YouTube channel for those of you who haven't seen it um, I do a weekly oracle card reading every Wednesday for my followers and I also put lots of different videos about um, I've done some unboxing and reviews I've done some crystal candle making um, lots of different things shopping hauls, uh, magic shop hauls and all that kind of stuff over there um, again it's crystals and coffee on YouTube so go ahead and subscribe to that if you want to keep up with that as well um, again I'll put the link in the description along with the links to my online shop, I've got an online crystal shop and I also have um, a bunch of online self taught courses for you as well about self healing, self care um, using crystals and that kind of thing as well so go check all of that out um in the meantime um before next week's episode i'm looking forward to speaking to you again next week that will be the last one before christmas next week um and i'll be back again in january after that so um yeah thank you very much for listening and have a great week and i will speak to you soon bye